Hello and welcome to Color Multimedia Enterprises. My name is Luke, also known as Tianary, and I am going to get you started on Hakes and Nico. It's been a while since I last did a tutorial video on any Hakes content, but I'm going to start this week by producing a Hakes tutorial on building websites using Nico. So, for those of you who are aware or possibly not even aware nico is a virtual machine as it says right here on the github web page and repository here and it will give you a bit of information on how you can install uh, the nico virtual machine if you go on over to the main nico website it will provide you with a bit of information regarding nico how you can use it with apache and a variety of other things. I'm not going to be using Apache for this tutorial. We're going to be using the Nico Tools command line to start a server and test our website on. Um, but if you do want to create a website and make it public, then Apache is probably the way to go using Mod Nico, and it has a bit of information here on how to set up that particular. Apache server So that's how you can uh... Okay, so It also provides you with a bit of information on how to configure Apache Provide some tests and other such things so that this is where you can get some Information on how to set up Apache, but as I mentioned, I'm not going to be using Apache I'm just going to be using the new code tools um, what I'm going to be doing is using brackets to design the website. Um, I'm not much of a web designer, so I can't provide you with um, a tutorial on designing websites. I would probably recommend using other sources for that. Uh, but let's go ahead and create a different folder in here. I am going to call it test. Nico something or other. Okay. So I'm going to go into here. I am going to create a new folder that is going to be SRC. And I'm also going to create another folder which is going to be called HTML. Which, oh, I made that an actual file, not a folder. <laughs> Good job. Uh, folder HTML, there we go. So these two folders are going to be a bit different from each other. So the HTML folder is going to contain all of our HTML pages and our SRC folder is going to contain all of our hex code, as you might imagine. So in our SRC folder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do main.hx. What I'm also going to do is create a file not in there. This is the one thing I do not like, do not like about brackets it doesn't give you the proper scope why does it keep doing that delete remove can i i don't know uh possibly not cr i'm gonna use windows explorer because this is annoying show an explorer right let's create a file I'm going to call it run.bat. Yeah, that's right. And in here, I am going to edit that. I am going to say hakes-cp-src-nico main.n. So that's the um, file that I want to create. And I also want to do main, main, which of course is the main entry point for the program so that's all i'm going to do there what i'm also going to do is start the server so what i probably want to do is go back into here open command line and i am going to type in nico tools dot server which allows us to start the server and now the server is on nico server in order to exit all you do is control c okay so i'm just gonna start that back up and when I go to my browser and I go over here and I type in localhost, 
it is going to navigate over to the server which unfortunately doesn't doesn't have a HTML page which is the reason why I did that um, I also believe you actually need to do this yeah so this is the Nico web dev server as you can see um, what we can also do there is server config where you can configure what where the server directory is so by default when you start the Nico server in the directory so I'm in this current working directory. This is the working directory users, Luke, documents, task, Nico. If I start Nico to the server in that directory, it will automatically make the server directory that working directory that where you started it. The loader path, that cannot be modified um, unless you go into the Hakes toolkit itself and modify it there. Um, I believe, although I haven't actually modified it myself, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, so, currently, if we go to, if we go back to localhost port 2000, it gives us this web page, which is not useful to us. So, we're going to basically create a HTML page. Now, this actually need well i don't think it actually needs to be an mtt um a dot mtt file i think it can just be a html file but i'm pretty sure that's fine anyway regardless so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a simple html page in here um, i'm going to give it a title um nico tutorial and inside our body, I am going to put in hello there. And then what I'm going to do is provide a double colon followed by the word name, followed by another double colon. And what that does is it will identify two hakes that that is in fact a variable and what hakes does is when we go into our main.hx and i and say okay this is how this is what we're going to execute this is the variables that we want to pass in when we pass in the variable which is going to be a variable called name it's actually going to replace that text with the name with the value of that variable right this is very very basic but it is of course a start so in order to um, get this working what i'm going to need to do is import a few things uh, first of all i probably want to provide package there so i'm going to import sys.db.types i'm also going to import hakes dot uh, is it ds.template i think it is i'm not 100 percent sure well, i'll take a look in a minute uh so we are going to create a class in here i am going to create a public static function main so this is the main entry point that we're going to be calling and if we go over to here we are going to take a look at the hakes template system so this is on the hakes website old.hakes.org which is very very useful and it will provide you with a bit of information and it's actually hakes.template actually hakes.resource.getString so that's obviously a, a, re, a resource that we need to import so we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute uh, do, 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 do. okay so if we go back into our application what we're going to do is create a variable which is going to be our resource so this is going to get so we're going to get the string of our resource so we're going to get hakes.resource.getString 
and the resource is going to be in this case index.htm right actually I think it's just index yeah it would be just index actually and then what we're going to do is why do I keep doing that <laughs> then what we're going to do is create a new template which we need to do that so var oops var t is equal to new template and that is going to be based on the string that we get so the string is going to get the string resource of this alternatively what we could do is use system um, in order to get that string instead so instead of using resources um, we can actually just use sys dot file system like that and we can instead do something like this uh, so it'll be something like file system and the what would it be called I think it's get content although I'm not 100% sure let's take a look at the hakes API which should be API again I can't stress this enough it's always a very good idea to just go ahead into the API and see what's going on to make sure that you know what you're doing and it is in fact not in there it's actually in sys.io yes it is okay so it's sys.io dot file so that'll be file dot get content we are going to get html slash index .htm. It is a bit more writing but it's not too much um so we get that content we get the um, we get the we basically get all of this html document and then we create a template based on that we d we don't actually need to use resources as far as i'm concerned it's just a different way of getting resources um so let's go back to the hex template system and see what we need to do so now we can create so based on that template we get the variable and we execute it um so what we do is we go back into here so we create var output is equal to t dot execute and as you saw on the web page it takes an anonymous structure so i am going to provide a variable called name and i am going to make that name luke or tianary since that's my uh, internet name i suppose you could say so tianary and then i will trace that output so I'll save that. Um, so we'll take a look at, as I said, I don't believe there is a difference between them, but we'll take a look anyway. So what we do is we go over to here. Well, that is hakes-cp. Let's just see if that this is all correct, which I believe it is. So what I'm going to do is just control C to end that. I am going to do run.bat we're going to build we create the main.n which is what is required um, and then we can run nico tools.server and what nico will do is it will detect main.n it will and then it will generate a web page for us so when we go back to here and press refresh oh interesting it didn't actually work main.n hmm Am I missing something? We're not using resources, so we don't need to do that. Uh, da, 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 da. What would it be? Um, 
as I said, I don't, be I don't believe we need that resource, but we'll we'll check to see if there is a difference. So what I'll do is I'll do uh, dash resource HTML slash index. Oops, index not HTM like that. We'll save that. We'll go back into here, and instead of doing file dot get content, I'll do x dot resource dot get string. Index. It might also be that it is. It does in fact need to be an a dot m t t i or dot m t t technically. <laughs> I don't know why I just said that. Uh, so let, let's take a look and see if this works as well. Control C to exit out of that. Let's build it again and run the server. This main.n, I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> Refresh. No, it's still not working. What the? I am refreshing it, right? <laughs> um. Looks fine to me. That is so weird. Why isn't it working? All right. So apparently the original issue was the fact that I didn't actually type in main.n because of course that's the uh that's the actual name of the bytecode file. What you can do is rename it to index.n because obviously the way that websites work is that if an index.html file exists then it will load that automatically by default because obviously that's how web servers work. So um, what I could do is instead of using main.n I can delete that and just cancel out of that. And if we go back to our main, uh, if we go back to our command line, rerun it so that we instead create an index.n and then start the server again and if we refresh the server instead of doing main.n just get rid of it and then it just comes up immediately after um, we do have this main.hx call which is kind of annoying um, and the reason why that is is because we're actually doing a trace function um, there is a different way of doing it Instead of using the trace function, we can do nico.lib.print, I believe it is. I believe it is. Um, and then we just do output there like that. I believe that's what it's called. Let's just take uh, that. <laughs> I do apologize. Um, let's just quickly take a look. So let's go into lib. I believe it is called print. Let's go down. Yeah, here it is. Print the specified value on the default output. So that'll print that, um, should do anyway. So let's cancel out of that. Let's run it, no errors. Okay, let's start the server, refresh, and there we go. We remove the trace call and we print what we've got onto the screen. So that was a very simple tutorial on how to uh, execute a web use, user template and execute it using a anonymous function uh, structure even so thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed and in the next tutorial i will probably take a look into um, recording on linux just to make things a bit easier the reason why is because um, linux is just simply easier to for web development and windows is just annoying <laughs> Um, that's just my opinion and through personal experience as well. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.